Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Today's video is all about the issue in fashion with next generation materials and why we're seeing such little progress there. So let's just get into it because I have a lot to say. So fashion currently has a materials problem, namely its dependence on polyester over any other material and how bad it is for the environment. Brands have been relying on polyester ever since it came about less than 100 years ago but with new regulation coming in plus you know public and shareholder opinions about the war on plastic brands know they need to be doing more and trying to get away from it more unfortunately it's not as simple as that the problem is twofold one fashion does not want to invest in these materials and two it does not want to stop its reliance on polyester so let's break into the polyester problem first and then the problem with new generation materials you're probably familiar with why they love polyester so much it's durable it's versatile and it's cheap like looking at this graph which shows its price comparison to cotton and viscose you can definitely see why brands are choosing to produce more and more polyester not to mention polyester is oil-based it is not crop based like the other two so with the increasing problems we're seeing with climate change for instance production won't be affected by droughts or heat waves like we've been seeing with the other two there's been already some issues with cotton production and it's just going to get worse as the climate crisis develops so i guess one of the ways we could solve this polyester issue is to introduce a polyester tax and i wanted to touch on this because it's so interesting and a possible solution that experts have raised and is kind of already happening in France with their five euro tax on fast fashion that we're seeing which obviously fast fashion uses a lot of polyester so we've already kind of got a form of this but if we get a more comprehensive tax that covers all polyester not just the polyester used by fast fashion companies then that could cause that polyester price to shoot up to the same or even higher than cotton or viscose and other materials but it's not a foolproof plan for example some brands might just happily swallow the tax because they like polyester more than cotton and viscose so they'll just pay a premium or it could drive brands to find a alternative to polyester which is just as bad for the environment we just don't know really the only solution is to move away from polyester completely but this is something brands are really dragging their heels on brands are still hung up on polyester even though they know new materials are available and they're very focused on recycling polyester even though they shouldn't be there's been a lot of news recently about recycling schemes for polyester and other materials failing due to lack of funding or just lack of interest for example you may have heard about renewer cell which collapsed in the past month despite having a lot of traction when it first came about and h&m was a major backer of it for example but h&m have since pulled their funding because it wasn't scaling quick enough and have moved on to another textile to textile recycling scheme this is the main issue with fashion is that brands are so fickle how can startups like renewer cell hope to keep going if brands can pull their funding and move on to a new thing now it's interesting because renewer cell was hoping to produce textile to textile recycling of viscose which we know is another material which has similar properties to polyester but isn't as lucrative i'd say but this new H&M backed investment, Sire, is polyester recycling, which is the big game. A lot of brands would be interested in recycled polyester. It keeps the properties of polyester, but obviously has sustainable properties that they can flout to customers or whatever. But the issue with recycling itself is one, it's super hard to scale because when you think about breaking down a garment and recycling it you have to literally separate the different fibers in that garment in order to recycle them separately they can't be recycled together so that kind of technology is expensive it doesn't really exist yet and it doesn't exist at scale at least it's a very hard thing to create in such a short time that brands need it if they're going to rely on recycled polyester to make all their sustainability claims but two, 
they should not be relying on recycling at all. Recycling polyester is just plugging a hole of a broken system. It's not fixing the issue at its root, it's just creating a distraction to our increasing dependence on plastic, which we should be trying to get away from in the climate crisis. They see recycling as a way into the circular economy, but hopefully a circular economy will one day be entirely without polyester or oil-based materials. So it just doesn't really fit into the ideal design of a circular system. So it's kind of infuriating to see them shoveling all their money into this venture when they should be focusing on other things. Let's talk about the things they should be focusing on instead and the issues that come with that. So next generation materials are really exciting. When we say next generation materials, mainly we're talking about biomaterials, which are largely plant-based. There's so many new materials now. It's a really exciting field. There's literally something from every kind of organism you can think of. Like we have mushroom-based leather. We also have seaweed-based yarn, sugarcane bioplastic sneaker foam, which has been used by Reebok, I believe. Recently, Coperni unveiled a bag that was made of 99% air. Like 99% air. There's basically no waste with that. It's insane and that got a lot of hype and that's kind of the first issue that I want to talk about with new materials. There's a lot on the market and every time a new thing comes out there's initially a lot of public awareness about it. Maybe they do a stunt where they pair with Caperni for example and a lot of people see it initially but it's maintaining that hype to get the items from first stage production into mass production which is the challenge and brands are often not that patient. It takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of money because you are literally inventing something from a basic organism into you know, a leather bag that has the same quality as a true leather bag. It has the same durability, it has the same visual appeal. It's so hard. The technology is there and it's developing all the time, but it will take time and brands are notoriously not known for waiting. Like I've said, there's so many different options for brands to choose from, depending on what they're hoping to achieve, what material they're trying to replace. Obviously, leather is a really big example here. Leather has such a big environmental impact when you're using traditional cow leather and mushroom-based alternatives have been quite successful. There's been a few brands that have done sort of small collections and stuff. And there's also been a lot of public awareness. There was a statistic that kind of stuck out to me. It was 92% of US shoppers say they would buy a product made from next generation materials and pay a premium to do it. So brands are aware that there's a public interest here and we have the materials in development and we've shown that they are scalable. So what is the issue? Because there was an example of a company that was literally so close to mass market. It was called Milo and it was mycelium leather made from mushrooms. And they had to shut down just as they were on the brink of being able to mass market. There's also an example of a, another sort of next generation material called Spinova who's recently had to say they have to scale back and they're close to failing despite how much progress they've managed to get through. So let's talk about why that is. Like we're all aware, the economy right now is not great. There's rising costs and there's also increasing pressure from brands to scale these materials at an unsustainable rate. The brands want the technology now. They wanna be able to switch now and sometimes that can mean that these next generation materials have to compromise on quality in order to create something at this pace. And no one wants that. Brands don't want that, but they also don't want to wait. So it's just kind of like pressure from all sides, from these new materials to achieve something which is almost impossible. Another possible explanation is that the market is too saturated. Like I said, there is something from everything and not all of these companies can get funding. There's only so many brands and these companies need a lot of money in order to start. There's a graph I found on someone posted on LinkedIn that they'd made 
And it was like common truths about new generation startups and why they are failing or struggling. So I'm going to link to the post and I'll pop it on the screen so you can pause it to read. It's really interesting. I want to talk about examples of brands rising to the challenge and really focusing on doing better. For example, I made a TikTok recently of Ghani's new boot. These boots are available mass market. They're made from a innovative new material which fuses tensile lysol fibers and recycled leather fibers. And Ghani are saying that they're just as good as their leather alternatives. They certainly look as good as their leather alternatives to me. The chief sustainability officer at Ghani actually shared that last year, they managed to phase out all virgin leather materials from their supply chain, which is insane considering they still produce a lot of leather looking items like boots, like bags, whatever you can think of. They're still producing that, but they're all either recycled or next generation materials. So they're proving that it can be done. I also wanted to talk about this hoodie, which was made in collaboration with a next generation material brand and a designer. This one's interesting because instead of the next generation material waiting for a big brand like Garni, like Chanel, whatever, to come to them and collaborate, they went and put out their own clothing line instead. They did not wait for brands to come to them. They produced something to show that it was marketable. And what's interesting as well is the price of this hoodie is $600, which is an insane price. But they said they've priced it this way in order to get funding to keep scaling their business. I guess if customers can afford it, they can help scale something that is going to become really important. The hoodie itself is fully recyclable, compostable and biodegradable. So the material they've created is insane and a great way to be using up cotton waste from the fashion industry. So whilst the price tag is maybe a bit steep for me, I do really like the idea of this. I'm not 100% sure on the product. It's a little bit plain for me, but I think it's more about concept and about buying into the idea of this if you are gonna shop it. So I'm gonna let it slide. So that's kind of a big overview on what's happening. Let's talk about quickly what we can do as consumers. And I really don't like the word consumers. I want to separate ourselves from the idea of buying. So I'm looking for an alternative to call us. But anyway, what can we do to help brands make this shift? Unfortunately, there's not much we can do in terms of mass scale. Like we can't push regulation other than pressing on our MPs or your government agencies but we can vote with our wallets. So we can support brands doing better. Like say, Ghani, I know they're quite expensive, but if you have the money, buying Ghani's collections with these leather alternatives, for example, will show the brand that we're interested, that we will put our money where our mouth is when we say we want sustainability and it will encourage them to do more. Or the other thing we can do is stop buying virgin and recycled polyester if we can. Most importantly, virgin. So I know Fashion Revolution Canada, I think is doing a no polyester challenge, which you can sign up to, which is a really nice way to do it as a community, but basically just stopping yourself from buying polyester for the rest of the year would make a huge difference not only to you, but in telling the industry that consumers are not interested in unsustainable materials anymore and they should stop churning them out. Plus, it's better for your health. I mean, the toxic nature of polyester is slowly ruining us. There will be studies in the next few years that show the impact. And obviously, Alden Wicker's book does a good job at telling us what it's like now. But yeah, your health will thank you. The environment will thank you. Anyway, I think that's the end of the video. I have so much more to say as always, but let me know if you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any thoughts. Um, give this video a like and subscribe if you're still watching. And I will speak to you really soon. I hope you have a lovely week. Bye.